welcome. Welcome to Vanadium. This is Chris Rankin. The more I learn about this mad world, the more mysterious it seems. When I first heard about quantum entanglement, I thought, how could something like that be real? How can objects separated by light years of distance still be linked in such a way that interacting with, measuring, or perturbing the state of one immediately somehow changes or sets the state of the other? When entangled, the objects, even though they're separated in space, are actually somehow parts of the same object. What happens to one happens to the other. This effect transcends space. It's instantaneous. It happens faster than light, which seems like it should be impossible. Even Albert Einstein had trouble believing in quantum entanglement. It even made him question quantum mechanics. Einstein and others considered such behavior impossible because it seemed to violate the idea of local realism and causality itself. Einstein referred to entanglement as spooky action at a distance. He argued that it was ridiculous, and therefore quantum mechanics itself must therefore be incomplete. The trouble is, quantum entanglement is not impossible. In fact, there is no debate about the existence of this effect. Entanglement or spooky action at a distance is being used in real-world technology today. There are examples that prove Einstein was wrong and that the world isn't what it seems. Quantum entanglement occurs when a group of particles is created. They interact or share proximity in just the right way so that the quantum state of each particle of the group cannot be described independently of the state of the others, even if the particles are separated by time or a large distance. An entangled system is one whose quantum state cannot be considered as just the product of the states of its local constituents. In other words, they are not individual particles, but each is only a part of an inseparable whole. One constituent element cannot be fully described without the others. Quantum entanglement is really at the heart of the apparent conflict between classical and quantum physics. It's really the primary feature of quantum mechanics, not present in garden variety Newtonian mechanics. The classic example of a quantum entangled state deals with photons of light. A photon is the smallest bit of a light wave, which if you were to picture it, is an oscillating electric and magnetic field moving through space. The magnetic component of the light moves like a shadow of the electric part. There are specialized optical devices called nonlinear crystals that can take an incoming photon or particle of light and split it into two lower energy photons. The process is called parametric down conversion. Energy is conserved when this happens, meaning the total energy of the two new photons equals that of the incoming photon that created them. Also, the momentum of light is also conserved. So the total momentum of the two newly created photons must also match up to their parent photon. This momentum is a vector, meaning it has a quantitative value and a direction. It has a strength, but it's pointed somewhere. The direction of this vector points up and down over time, or it rotates, pointed in the direction of the wave's oscillating electric field. Here is where the magic happens. After the two new photons are created and down conversion, they're sent off to never see each other again. While both child photons are traveling along, the direction of each of their electric fields, the directions of their angular momentum, are constantly switching up and down along an axis or plane. The electric part of the light is moving up and down, up and down, like the front of an ocean wave. Since the momentum is conserved, as soon as the direction of one photon is measured up or down, it dictates the measured state of the other. Once one of the photons is detected and the direction of its electric polarization is known, up or down, it means the other photon must be detected with an electric field or polarization pointed in the opposite direction. In other words, due to conservation of momentum, if the polarization of one of the child photons is pointed up, it means the others is pointed down. When one light photon is measured, it's almost like it's talking to its partner, instructing the other light wave what it's going to do before it does it. 
this communication happens in zero time, faster than light. Electrons, other particles, and even some molecules do the same thing with some of their measured properties. Famed physicist Erwin Schrodinger published an early seminal paper defining and discussing the idea of quantum entanglement. In the paper, he recognized the importance of the concept, writing, I would not call entanglement one, but rather the characteristic trait of quantum mechanics, the one that enforces its entire departure from classical lines of thought. Like Einstein, Schrodinger was dissatisfied with the concept of entanglement because it seemed to violate the speed limit on the transmission of information laid out in the theory of relativity. In August 2014, Brazilian researcher Gabriel Lemos and team were able to photograph objects using photons of light that had never actually interacted with the subjects, but were instead entangled with photons that did interact with the objects. Lemos, from the University of Vienna, claims this new quantum imaging technique could be applied to take pictures of scenes with extremely low light in fields like biological or medical imaging. In 2016, China launched the world's first quantum communication satellite and their $100 million Quantum Experiments at Space Scale, or Quest, mission. The craft, nicknamed Mises, after the ancient Chinese philosopher, demonstrated the feasibility of quantum communication between Earth and space, proving the reliability of quantum entanglement over unprecedented distances. In the June 16, 2017 issue of Science, Yin and his team reported setting a new quantum entanglement distance record of 1,203 kilometers, demonstrating the survival of a two-photon entangled pair. In 2020, Researchers reported quantum entanglement between something actually macroscopic or visible to the naked eye, a millimeter-sized mechanical oscillator, and a distant cloud of atoms. Later, the researchers complemented this work by quantum entangling two mechanical oscillators. Quantum entanglement is thought to be a critical factor behind the ability of green plants and certain bacteria to transfer energy from sunlight and initiate its conversion into chemical energy with near 100% efficiency through photosynthesis. Some scientists have gotten really creative with this, but it's hard to say how much scientific value there is to every experiment. A group of physicists recently tried to entangle a microscopic animal known as a tardigrade. A tardigrade, also called a water bear or moss piglet, is a tiny animal only visible under a microscope that looks like a cross between a caterpillar and the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. Tardigrades are known as extremophiles, which means they can withstand and even thrive in environments most organisms can't, even the vacuum of space. I did an episode on extremophiles a while back. For this experiment, the researchers collected several of these tardigrades or water bears from a Danish roof gutter in 2018. Then the scientists put them inside a quantum computer onto a superconducting qubit. They wanted to blur the realms of quantum and classical mechanics. The researchers argued the tardigrade was entangled at a quantum level, but some scientists say the team's claims go way beyond what they actually achieved. The results aren't published in a journal, but they're hosted online. Outside scientists were skeptical that the experiment really showed quantum entanglement. Douglas Nadelson, a physicist at Rice University, wrote in a blog post that the change in resonance frequency observed in the experiment was not entanglement in any meaningful sense, and that the tardigrade was no more entangled with the qubits than the underlying silicon chip is. I'm going to read a quote from a hero of the Vanadium show, Rupert Sheldrake who describes the situation very well. He said, In quantum theory, objects that were once joined together retain a connection at a distance when separated, as in magic, by contact or contagion. Einstein dismissed quantum non-locality as spooky action at a distance. But quantum entanglement is real and is applied technologically in quantum computing. Isaac Newton ran into the science magic problem with gravity. The idea that the moon influenced the tides through empty space sounded like magic, and Newton was embarrassed by his failure to explain what he called 
the occult or hidden force of gravitation. His critics accused him of magical thinking. Thank you very much. This was Chris Rankin with Vanadium.